Welcome back to our session on information theory and self-organization. In this short video, we're going to pick up on the point we were just making about studying self-organization as an increase in organization over time and look at how we can measure organization or order or structure. First, let's think about how to directly measure order or organization in a system at a system level. There are several options here using information theory. Information theory is really a natural choice, particularly when we think about how we've used it before to think about when a system is ordered or, or random, looking at the more randomness, the more entropy and so on. So Gershenson Fernandez suggested that we could use the complement of randomness or entropy to measure order. And at face value, that seems to make a lot of sense. For me though, it's not the measure of order or organizational structure that we should really use going forward as our main way of quantifying that concept, basically because it's too simplistic. It misses higher order structure in the system. It only takes a very basic view of that. For example, we could look at elementary cellular automata. Rules such as Rule 54 and Rule 110, which we know to have very complex structure and seem to have the highest level of self-organization amongst the elementary cellular automata, also have a fine balance between zeros and ones in their, uh, in their cells that would appear very random from the perspective of this measure and show low self-organization. And for me, that doesn't make sense. It's missing a lot of the higher order structure there that we mean when we are talking about self-organization. So I think we need something that goes beyond that. Another option then seems to be looking at mutual information between parts of the system. Polanyi here suggested to look at a higher order mutual information, a generalization of mutual information, which is known as the integration or multi-information has been around in information theory for some time. It's a generalization of mutual information beyond pairwise. So Polanyi suggested this could be used to study uh, to study cell organization across the system as a whole. I like this measure of integration in and of itself. I think it's an interesting measure. For me, I'm still not 100% convinced it's the right measure for order or organization in general, but I like, it. I like the measure for other reasons. It's implemented in the JRDT toolkit you can find it by looking for the multi-information, multi-info calculator in each of the estimator types. It's not implemented in our auto analyzer GUI though, but you can see the usage pattern for it by looking at the usage patterns for the other measures that are there. The third uh, potential candidate here for measuring order or organization in general, directly at a system level, is the statistical complexity. The use of this for looking at self-organization of a system over time is suggested by Shalizi and company in this paper down the bottom. Now I'm not going in to go into it precisely how to uh, how this, uh, this, this concept is measured in this course. It, it's out of scope for us. If you want to look at that, I can point you to that paper. And indeed, uh, that paper will point you to the original paper that presented the statistical complexity measure by Young and Crutchfield uh, in 1989 from memory. In comparing these different approaches, for me, I prefer approach three as a measure of organization in general. That's a subjective judgment, though. You should make your own determination about that. What I will say though is that approach two is more accessible to the reader and more accessible, more accessible to compute uh, in general. If you would like to read more about those measures, those direct measures of order, order or organization at a system level, I suggest you have a look at these references here. As an alternative though, and, and an alternative that we are going to follow, I want to consider measuring various aspects of order and organization within a system rather than directly trying to quantify order organizational structure at the system level 
as a whole. The idea here is that self-organization is about information structuring. We can go back and have a look at the earlier definition we saw from Siyama to get a sense of that. So there may be multiple aspects of information structure or organization that we wish to investigate. We may not wish to just look at one measure of how information is organized or ordered across the system as a whole. We may wish to look at different aspects of that when we study self-organization. For example, we may look at how variables within the system temporarily structure information. We may look at the relationships between the variables and indeed we may focus on specific relationships uh, in preference to others because of what we're interested in about that system. Similarly, we may look at the spatial structuring of information in the system. We may look at how information is stored and how it's transferred. Or indeed, we may look at specific aspects of the information structuring or organization that correlate with the task of the system that we're looking at. For example, here, I'm showing you a snapshot of a model of ants in NetLogo. We can see here that uh, the model highlights pheromone trails that the ants have laid down. We could think about those pheromone trails as structuring information or, or, or organization of the system. And we may think about ways of using information theory specifically to answer questions about that structuring here. So our approach is really to use information theory to, character, to characterize information processing structure in complex systems and their self-organization and how this changes over time. And we want to do this using measures of various aspects of order or organization, not simply using one measure for order and organization at the system level as a whole. To give an example of what I mean here, coming back to this example of the ant foraging that we see here, instead of just measuring order or organization as a whole in the system, we may ask about how individual ants structure temporally the paths that they walk in and how that changes when there are uh, foraging trails established here versus when they are not. We may ask about how different ants correlate uh, their walks within the system. We may ask about the spatial structure across many ants when we have the foraging trails established. We may ask about the information storage by ants when they're laying their pheromone trails down in the environment and how their walks are temporarily structured. We may ask about how information is transferred from one ant to another in the system, either when they meet or when they encounter the pheromone trails that one has dropped for the other to react to. And we may look at aspects of the system that correlate with the task as I hinted at already. What I'm getting at here is that there are many, many aspects of this system that we could use information theory to investigate. We can characterize the self-organization that is taking place here in many different ways by asking specific questions about the information structure that we uh, can identify here. For me, I think that can be more revealing to look at all of these different aspects in different ways rather than just asking one single question question about the order or organization in the system and how that changes over time. So that's what we are going to do going forward. And here I just wanted to give you a sense of how we're starting to connect what we understand about information theory to what we want to ask about complex systems and self-organization going forward in this course. So here we've talked about how self-organization is an increase in order over time without external control. We then talked about how the key to measuring self-organization is measuring order or organization or structure in the system. And we looked at the subtle difference between doing so directly at a system level or examining multiple aspects of information structuring within the system. And how my perspective on this is that that can be far more revealing than trying to do so in a single shot measure 
and that's what we're going to take that's the perspective we're going to take forward with us in this course coming up in particular we're going to look at how we can measure how information is processed in complex systems how it's processed through time and across space in the system we're going to look specifically at measuring information storage and information transfer in these systems and their interaction and we're going to use those measures to characterize how the self-organization takes place in these complex systems.